The carriage bridge looks very tired. Those images appeared in internet yesterday. Indeed, you may see some of the damages towards the railway part of the bridge, which is quite strange because there were no recent strikes reported. It means that this part of the construction wasn't repaired properly after the first strike on the bridge, then the railway part was damaged. You may say that those are just minor damages and the bridge can still work. Yes, it works. But there is the feature which tells us that the bridge now has the limited capabilities for the transfer of the heavy cargo. And the structural damage of the bridge could be much more severe than we see just visually on those pictures. So the clue that the bridge is not okay for the heavy cargo lies with the this ferry, which Ukraine, by the way, kaboomed around three weeks ago. Russia used this ferry a lot to transfer the oil products, but somehow didn't use the carriage bridge. And with the new pictures appeared in internet, we may understand that the bridge is not in a good shape. So indeed, the Ukrainian attack on the Russian ferry fleet was a main destruction of the Russian supplies towards Crimea and the southern part of Ukraine, which is now partially occupied by the Russian Federation. Hello, my friends, and welcome. My name is Denis, and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go. Now to the Kursk Oblast, the main advantage of the Ukrainian armed forces still there, so Ukraine has the initiative, but the major expansion, or as I called it, the stage 2 of the operation in Kursk, has not yet been confirmed by Ukrainian side. Russians told about it yesterday and the day before yesterday that Ukraine has started massive strikes on many of the directions. Indeed, there were some of the fights, but there was no massive propulsion of the Ukrainian armed forces in Kursk unfortunately for the last 24 hours but we'll see how the situation will go for the next 24 or maybe 48 hours some of those operations may not be that fast russians also report that they've started their small counterattack in Kornova, but i don't have the real evidence of that so the front lines there are standstill for one week and a half already the good thing that ukraine continued to cut the bridges across the seine river and recently one more big bridge which was severely damaged was finally finished by harmers. Here we have the Karinsky bridge and Russians published this photo that indeed there was the major strike on it. Some of the car with the dash cam filmed it. Plus we have this video from the drone shows that definitely the bridge is fully caputed. It is no go for any sort of the transportation. So finally I believe that the Russian group English Koa district will be forced to leave their place. As it happened in 2022 in Kherson direction, the Russia hesitated for around three months but after all was forced to leave Kherson city. Which is till now was the major Russian success if we speak about the size of the cities. The second largest city which Russia was able to occupy was Mariupol. Or it's better to say they occupied what is left from the city because they demolished it with aviation bombs. And then of course Bakhmut, but Bakhmut is not that big after all. Well in general about the Kursk Oblast situation we have different information coming which sometimes contradict between each other. For example, one source has said that the Ukraine is now on stage 2 of the operation, more reinforcements were sent and the goal of Ukraine is to advance to Kurchatov nuclear power plant. But the other sources say that Russia concentrated the large group of the forces and they are up to start their counteroffensive against Ukraine to kick out Ukrainian forces from their territory in the coming weeks. But there is no proofs of that information coming. As well as there are no proofs of their Ukrainian assault towards Kurchatov nuclear power plant. Even after one month there is the informational fog around the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region, unfortunately. And it's very hard to confirm all of that, so we have to rely on the drone images, satellite images sometimes, to see the real picture and the army movement. So yesterday actually I saw that the Ukrainian army started some sort of the attacks. That's why I thought that maybe yes, Ukraine went on offensive, the major one. So sorry guys for telling you a little over exaggerated news yesterday. Well, we'll see how the situation develops in the coming months. For now, we definitely see the slowdown of the Kursk operation, definitely, and also the slowdown of the Russian attacks on the east. Guess if you like the job that I do on YouTube daily, you may also support me on Patreon. The link for my Patreon page is available right in the video description below. Thank you so much for your awesome support. By the way, let's go to Ukrainian front lines. There was no movement from the Russian side today in attempt to encircle Ukrainian forces in this 
this region. However, Russia moved just a little towards Gorodivka. Let's go to the timeline. Yesterday and today they are in this settlement. So there could be some of the local fights, but in general Ukraine managed to stop the Russian offensive towards Pokrovsk for a moment. There was no massive assaults from the Russian side for already five days. It means that something really changed and Ukraine for sure sent some of the capable reinforcements. Alright, and I want to tell you more about the southern part of the Pokrovsk direction. It seems like there was the order already for Ukrainian army to leave the positions. Experts say that there are just few of the Ukrainian forces left in the area number one and in the coming days and weeks Ukraine will withdraw the forces from this area number two and finally will be forced to go to these very important heights leaving this entire area under the Russian control unfortunately. For Ukraine it's very hard to defend this ground and we understand that Russia also pushes from the north and recently they crossed this river from Krasnohorivka so Ukraine will be forced to withdraw the forces, it is 100%. We know that Ukraine moved towards New York with successful counterattack taking under control the central part of the settlement, while Russians tried to kick the Ukrainian armed forces out from the town by using lots of their artillery, and they did a very stupid move, they gathered their artillery systems, peons, at the same spot. Well, actually they were not just peons, but many of the other artillery systems, so one of them was kaputed, here it's Tulup, so Tulpon. Quite a powerful system and its gun. One more Tulpan was not far away from the place and it ate Hymer's shell too. The unknown artillery system, probably Pion, was kaputed. The Russian Grad rocket artillery system was hit too. The Russian Getzint S system was hit as well. All of this stuff happened in the same region in Torrid's direction, so Russia was in a real hurry to kick out Ukrainian forces from New York, which was recently liberated, at least a part of it. As I understand it, the Russian generals were shocked about this Ukrainian counteroffensive, successful one, that's why they gave the order to do everything to return the New York back, but they did major mistakes by sending their forces in a very close proximity to Torrid's and also in keeping their artillery altogether, that's why Hammer was so successful even with a single surveillance drone flying in the area. Great combination. What is quite concerning now that Russia advances in Vodine, they occupy the vast part of this village and there is just a matter of time that Russia takes Vuhledar under control if no emergency actions are taken by the Ukrainian command. The Vodine is not yet fully occupied but we see that Russia assaults from this side and also they go from this village too so their goal is to take Vuhledar in their usual gloves. They also tried to push Vuhledar from Palovka but they lost all of their forces so for Russia it's still difficult to go straight ahead towards the settlement, but this operation might be successful after some period of time. Ukraine still has capabilities to stop this major Russian strike and the bottleneck, well it's not yet the bottleneck, it's the good way out for Ukrainian army just in case also for now. About what and we have the confirmation from the deep state military map source that almost all of the village was taken by the Russian forces, if not the entire village. The new satellite images of the kaboomed Russian military airfield in Volgograd were revealed by the United Kingdom intelligence. Here they show them to you, so the destroyed storage area was confirmed. High detailed image, known in doubt that this strike was successful. Here are some of the Russian hangars for their airplanes and it's been confirmed that several of the airplanes were damaged and at least four were completely kaboomed. Those hangars are just useless to protect the Russian airplanes, that's what we see on those images. And also Russia lost the vast part of the munition which was stored open air not far away from the airfield. And yet Russia is unable to use their airfield for the operations because of this severe devastation. As you know already Ukraine started to use lots of the fire drones, I call them napalm drones but actually those are termite drones. Ten of those cases were officially recorded but many of the cases were not recorded and published in the internet. It means that Ukraine uses these tactics massively. It's a good tool to smoke Russians out from the tree lines from their positions. Oh interesting news, it seems like Russians are unable to register their Google accounts any longer. If Russians try to register their account they should confirm that they are not robot. If they put the Russian number started with plus seven they'll have have this message, this phone number cannot be used for verification. Was it done by Google? Well, I think yes. It basically means no Gmail services and limited access to YouTube. Well, there is the small chance that it's the temporary glitch, but something tells me that it's permanent. 
All right, many, many countries again started to talk about the possible peace negotiations between Ukraine and Russia. For example, Le Monde came out with an article citing the sources in German government that Chancellor Scholz wants to create the efforts for dialogue between Ukraine and Russia. He has his own peace initiative, his own peace plan. He started to talk like that after he lost a rating personally and his party too. So probably this peace initiative is the last chance for him to get some of the points in the future elections. Le Monde also stated that for Chancellor it's okay if some of the Ukrainian territories will just go to Russia. Well, as I told you many times in my videos, if you give the predator what it needs, the appetite of predator will grow gradually. And Russia will strike Ukraine once again after some time, a couple of years, maybe three years. But it will happen for sure because Putin will be encouraged by the Western politicians. He'll understand that in the long run, if he continue the efforts to push Ukraine more and more, he'll get what he needs. Meanwhile, our partners still support Ukraine with lots of the weaponry. For example, Sweden decided to send some of the vehicles plus the air defense systems to Ukraine. But still, there are many of the countries which want to be the peace mediators. For example, like China, they will send their representative to Russia very soon. And for Putin himself, the Chinese deal is not good either. He needs all of the Ukraine, but in China's plan, the power of the territories will just go to the Russian Federation. The Ukraine will keep its sovereignty. Putin said that the Chinese plan is okay, but they will think about it. He doesn't really want to occupy Donbass and all of those destroyed villages. He wants to ruin the Ukrainian sovereignty. Putin's goal is actually much bigger. He wants to restore the Soviet Union, not just with Ukraine, but with other countries too. But some of the politicians also in the West think that it's some sort of the regional conflict around the Russian-speaking areas of Ukraine, Donbass. No, 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 it's not like that. And if you give Putin territories, you'll see further their escalation. So just for you to understand of how many countries want to be mediators. So China obviously, now Germany with Chancellor Charles, Orban plans to renew his peace mission this month. India calls Russia and Ukraine for immediate peace talks and they'll send their representative to Russia also in the coming days. Austria wants to have the peace initiative meeting on their territory. Also we know some of the initiatives from Brazil and many others. So many experts say that there could be some of the agreements between Ukraine and Russia and Ukraine will have to give up its territories. But again, it's a very bad scenario, as I told you. But continuation of this war for a long time is the bad scenario either. With the military support Ukraine has and with all of the issues inside Ukraine, especially with the Ukrainian government, which sometimes takes absolutely crazy actions which are not popular within the Ukrainian society, well, the situation for Ukraine might deteriorate in the coming couple of years. Maybe that is why Chancellor Scholz calls Ukraine and Russia for the immediate peace talks. They secure at least the current status quo because they see that Russia south in Pokrovsk, for example, with a high pace, but the peace talks are also dependent on Russia. Russia wants the peace talks just to have a break. So what should be done to avoid this trap? First of all, increase the military support of Ukraine. And the second thing is to find the corruption and incompetence of Ukrainian government and some of the military officials. Unfortunately, Ukraine cannot do it alone. The external influence is needed. A really hard push to get rid of that stuff. Guys, I'm telling you the real situation without ponies and rainbows. All right, Orban even promised the spectacular development of the peace agreement in September. I wonder what could it be? Will Ukrainian government just give up its territories to Russia? Well, honestly, I don't think that this variant is real. The Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov said that all of those initiatives are useless because they do not include the full rights for the Russian speakers in the eastern and southern regions of Ukraine. And the idea here is not about the language. There are many of the Russian speakers who fight in the Ukrainian army. I'm the Russian speaker myself. But I'm Ukrainian and I do not support the Russian regime and the Russian policy. What Russia wants here is they want to take Ukraine with a soft power. They see that with a military power, it's very complicated for them. That's why they want to create some sort of the parties from their own representatives from the occupied regions to send those straight to Ukrainian government to destabilize the political life in Ukraine, causing the soft revolution bringing the Russian puppets in power in Ukraine. 
That's what they did actually in Georgia by investing billions of dollars into the ruling party, which is now pro-Russian actually. And the war which happened in 2008 between Russia and Georgia didn't even matter for them. For this reason, Lavrov and all the Russian government will go to protect the Russian speakers, but in fact they want to deploy the ticking bomb under Ukrainian government and Ukrainian sovereignty. Honestly, guys, I do not like the vast part of the Ukrainian government. It is still corrupt, but it is not under Russia. If Russia comes to Ukraine, if Russia rules Ukraine, it will create more risks not just for Ukrainians, but also for our neighbors, because Russia might use Ukrainians to attack some of the neighboring countries. Like they did, for example, with Chechnya. As we know, Chechens are sometimes fighting against the Ukrainian forces. But before there was the war between Russia and Chechnya. And our neighbors are really concerned about it. For example, Lithuania is calling for the emergency evacuation plan for its citizens in case Russia would start a massive attack on the country through the Valky Corridor together with Belarus forces. By doing so, they will cut Lithuania and the rest of the Baltic countries from the ground support of the NATO alliance. By doing so, Russia may also connect the landlocked territory of Kaliningrad. So Belarus could play for the Russian favor and if Russia establishes its puppet government in Ukraine, Ukraine unfortunately will take the Russian side, so, so actually it's not profitable for our allies to let the Ukraine lose. But still guys, I think that this worst case scenario will not happen and I'm quite positive about the future in Ukraine in a long term future, let's say in a 10 years or something like that. And I don't say that this war is going to over in a nearby perspective, unfortunately. It is not because of Ukraine, but because of the Russian regime. Well, anyways guys, don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot and as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.